All right, everyone, welcome back to Tennessee This Week. It is time to hear from our pundits this evening, or this afternoon, rather. Joining us right now, we have WATE 600 side healthcare analyst Craig Griffith and our political analyst George Corda. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right, so we just heard from uh, Hugh Nystrom, the new commission chair, and we talked about the mix of, of new faces and some familiar faces. What do you take of all of this and the dynamic moving forward, Craig? Well, it's an exciting new time in Knox County. You got a new sheriff, you have a new uh, county mayor, you have a new head of the commission. But unfortunately, they're going to face many of the same old problems that we've seen over the years. And uh, obviously, the, the school budget is two thirds of the county's budget. So that's going to be the dynamic between the schools and what they want to do to move forward is going to be significant. And also, with the new sheriff in town, uh, you know, we've heard about him needing a new jail pod and things like that. So there's going to be all these things that are going to be tugging at both uh, Glenn Jacobs as, as the new mayor and also Hugh as the new head of the county commission as they work their way through the budget process. How quickly, George, do you think that some of these goals can be accomplished or can they be? There'll be a lot of talk about it and there'll be a lot of good feelings expressed about it and some will get done, but not everything. And there are going to be conflicts. County commission has a different charge than the school board and which has a different charge from someone else. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have these things occur. And But these are all people of goodwill. I, I, I was interested in, in thinking about Roger Kane and his position, the political aspects of it. Now, he's going to be out there dealing in an environment which is traditionally and typically fairly contentious between the school system and the county commission and mm -hmm. county mayor, what have you. Well, he he, he is accomplished in the political arena, but he's also a buffer. He's also the guy that will catch the spears when they're thrown at the administration about what it's failing to do or not doing or somebody wishes they'd do more. So he, he becomes a very important part of this process because he's the, the blocker for the county mayor. He is also expendable if things go south well here's the problem let's get a new liaison were in you surprised so it's a political to see that thing. they you know they have a liaison for this now for education were you surprised when that was announced not on the basis i just explained it <laughs> well and also as i mentioned the schools are the biggest part of the county budget so it's it seems logical to put someone who has a daily contact with the school system but if you uh, talk to roger i mean his mission he feels is much is bigger than just Knox County Schools, it's homeschooling, it's college, it's the whole the whole nine yards. So we'll have to see how he uh, goes. Go the more on. communication you have, the less likelihood you have for conflict, and he'll be in a position to help ensure that people are talking all the time and not siloing themselves. Let's talk about the overcrowding issue. Is there really going to be enough money somewhere? Can we make this happen? Can we solve the overcrowding? Speaking of conflicts. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you... It all boils down to money. You know, you'll have to see where the money for the sheriff's department is going to come from. And but then, of course, you have Glenn who said that he's not in favor of raising taxes. So, how where will that money come from? And of course, you know, you can you know issue bonds to to, to cover things like that if you want to go farther into debt. But you know, should that it be a priority the, these first months? Nobody makes prisons and jails a priority, and the taxpayers don't want it to be a priority. They want schools to be a priority. They want roads to be a priority. And if somebody's breaking the law, that ain't the priority. So, th th when I was worked for the state, the governor's press secretary used to task me to help the insurance, the commission, corrections department when they had emergencies. And uh, here's what I learned: people don't care. Until there's a crisis, and then they forget. Would you and not say crisis, the opioid crisis, crisis is, is here? And would you not say that that crisis is for... Well, I don't think expanding the jail is going to, you know, solve your opioid. But what's going to happen is that there will be a judge somewhere. You know, somebody in a black robe in a, in a federal courtroom is going to say, as he has in the past, your jails are overcrowded. You need to do something That's about exactly it. right. And that's, you know, and, that's and that makes it the most expensive you make, option. You either so make the that's decision... that's one person that's going to be... You curious. make the decision or the judge makes it for makes you. It for you. And All then right. you got cover, though. We want to talk about another issue real quickly here. Democratic candidate for governor, Carl Dean, on the airwaves again with a new ad focusing on Tennessee's decision not to expand Medicaid. Say, the state is sending money out of state and taking a dig at Republican Bill Lee. Have a listen. I've stood next to Bill Lee when he's been adamantly against expanding Medicaid, even though it means more shutdown hospitals and higher costs on all of us. All right, that is a 
small dig, I think, compared to the campaigning that we just saw uh, a few months ago. Were you surprised that there was even a dig? When I, I heard that the other day, and it kind of caught my, kind of flipped my head around going, ooh, I didn't really think this race would go there. Well, from the Democratic side, health care is the number one issue that they're going to focus on. And uh, as, as we've talked about <laughs> on the show many times before, these are the issues that have been uh, front and center between Republicans and Democrats for the last four or five election cycles. And the Republican viewpoint has carried the day, which uh, it seems to me that, and all those things that he says about Medicare, uh, those were all discussed when uh, Governor Haslam had his special session for Insure Tennessee. Nothing has changed. But it didn't carry the day then either. <laughs> so do you think that Dean really I think Dean, could win I think on this Dean, issue? I think Dean's helping Lee with that ad, and here's why. Most sentient, lucid Americans know that their country is $20 trillion in debt. And I was reading an article in Governing Magazine today on this very issue. There are states that are now raising taxes and cutting services because they're having to pick up more of this expanded Medicaid cost. And so they're in the position now of having to do what the federal government was funding, but the federal government pays for nothing in the United States. What the taxpayers were funding, the taxpayers who also are being put in debt to the tune of half a billion to a half a trillion to a trillion dollars a year by that very same government. So I think Lee in in a red state is act I mean uh, Dean is actually unknowingly helping the only, the only thing is every time it's been on the ballot across the country to vote to expand, it has passed. Fairly Because it's supposed to be somebody else's well, let's money. Talk not just about the issue, but the fact that it was a little bit, a little bit of an attack ad there. Does that work? We saw Lee kind of come that wouldn't, through. That wouldn't even be considered an attack ad. A jab, <laughs> you, you can, maybe? You, you can discuss a person's record on an ad and it's not you know it's only when you bring up you know whether this person supports Nancy Pelosi or something like that those are attack ads this was a kumbaya ad that you know had a little bit of flair to it in my opinion in the political world it's called a contrast ad and it's going to get a lot rougher because now you got a two person race you don't have that triangulation thing you had going on right. in the republican gubernatorial primary so it's going to get a lot rougher than that but it's the first indication, but it's a it's an it's an odd subject. It's that would be great in the Democratic primary. I don't think it's great in the general. Well, what he's trying to do is make sure those blue pools of Memphis, Nashville, Chattanooga, and Knoxville expand. Right. And that's the only way you can win. All right. We want to talk about some uh, poll numbers here real quickly, you guys. Uh, the Senate side of the NBC Marist poll last week. Here are the actual numbers. We talked about a little bit about this last week. Phil Bredesen at 48 percent. Marsha Blackburn at 46 percent. Essentially a dead heat here. On the other hand, the Fox News poll pretty much reverses those numbers. 47 percent for Blackburn, 44 percent for Bredesen. That's inside the margin of error. So what's going to make the difference in this race? Stapling Phil Bredesen to Barack Obama. Duct taping him to Barack Obama. Making them seem like good buddies. Now, I think they're holding fire on that because Bredesen will quickly trot out response ads that say, here's where I disagreed with Obama, and here's where I disagreed with Obama, but he also said some things and here, about Obama. here's what Obama didn't put me in his cabinet. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, so I think they're waiting on that, but that's how she wins. This is about Phil Bredesen and tying him to an establishment left Democratic Party that people recognize. They recognize it in Pelosi and Obama. Charles Schumer, most Tennesseans don't know who he is. I think that the issue here, if you, if you dig down into these numbers in this poll, what you'll see is that this campaign is about Bredesen's brand. It's not that he's a Democrat. It's not that she's a Republican. It's Phil Bredesen's brand that he's established over the years, being a governor, you know, being a good job as a governor. And the question is, will his brand be enough to carry him through? And I think if he stays, you know, if if, if Marsha gives him all these openings to where she, he can go on and cut ads and say that she lied about me, which she did, you know, she's giving that election, <laughs> you know, to Bredesen. It's so. going to be interesting to watch this one unfold. We need to take a quick break, everyone. Still to come, we are seeing the Democrat in District 2 congressional race hitting the airwaves. That's coming your way next. Stay with us, everyone. You're watching Tennessee This Week on WATE 6 on your side.